Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm back at the Campy and Caravanning Club site at Sandringham, one of my favourites. And I'm here with the Remor Killig 9, a new family van. And this test is a little bit different because I've brought my family. So what exactly is the Remor Killig 9? Well, the Remor name we've covered before. We recently reviewed their Horus 66 campervan. This, however, is their new entry-level coach-built range, the Killig. And it's quite a range too. Five low profiles and six overcabs. And it's quite good to see overcabs in the range because, well, for families often they work really well. As long as they can live, of course, with that shape. So advantages in having an overcab and well there's plenty of layouts to choose from of course with 11 models in the range. They start at under six meters and go to over seven. This one, the nine, is 6.97 meters long, 3.04 meters high, so you will pay a bit more on French auto routes, and 2.34 meters wide. Of course it's on a Ford Transit cab, all Killigs are. And they come with the 130 PS engine and the six speed manual gearbox. Yes, you can have the automatic as an upgrade and that's 2,600 pounds if you want it. 2,600 pounds? So, pricing. Well, Remar is rather getting itself a name for value for money. And that's especially true with this Killig range. This one starts at 61,495, although that is perhaps a little bit misleading because all the ones that come to the UK are higher spec. So add another five grand on to have it exactly as you see here, 66,495 on the road. And well, in 2023, I'm afraid that is about as affordable as a motorhome like this is going to get. For that extra five grand you get, and this is where I need my phone for the crib sheet, well, you get the reversing camera, an alarm, you get an entrance door window, you get a bed protection nets so your kids don't roll out of bed and hurt themselves. You get the cab seat covers, and then you get all sorts of gear on the Ford cab. These side mouldings are colour coded, as are the front bumpers. You get cornering lights, um, a lock on the glove box, heated windscreen, automatic lights and wipers, a pre-crash assist system, uh, trend bits on the dashboard, lane change a warning. Yeah, a lot of extra kit for that five grand. So it just brings it up to something that you don't really need to spend any extra cash on. Yes, you could add an awning or bike rack or something and of course you can add alloy wheels I think they're 1350 pounds but frankly why bother this is a family motorhome it's not a sports car just spent the money on ferry crossings and campsites instead and enjoy what has proved to be a great family motorhome So this is a seven metre motorhome, which personally I find a more manageable size for manoeuvring, parking, and especially when you take a wrong turn, than anything much bigger than seven metres. Taking a look down the side, then down the near side, of course you've got the cheaper caravan style windows that sit proud of the body, but they don't somehow seem as much of an afterthought as they sometimes do. And then down here, in this little locker in the skirt, well, you th might think it was storage, but no, that is your leisure battery, 100 amp hour. Moving down the side, you've got your cassette toilet servicing hatch, and then access here into really quite a generous amount of storage. Thank you. 
Now, of course, this is the bottom bunk bed, but underneath here, you've got generous storage that goes right the way across the vehicle. It's 30 inches or 760 millimeters wide and 19 inches or 480 millimeters high. You've got tie down hooks down there as well. So plenty of room for your barbecue, outdoor chairs and all that sort of stuff. And the doors can be strapped open so they don't flap about when you're loading and unloading. Now, if that's not enough, you can simply fold the bottom bunk up, clip it into place, and now you've got headroom in this garage of 1.48 meters or four foot 10. I can well, almost stand up in here, and that is more headroom than you'll get in garages in much, much bigger motorhomes. So plenty of room to get a bike or two in here if you want to. And of course, just take the bikes out and fold the bed down if you need the accommodation at night. The other thing that's great about this van is it's a three and a half ton motorhome, so you can drive it on a standard car license. And the payload is a really generous 730 kilos. And of course, with four of you or six of you on board, you'll need plenty of payload. So on the offside too, you've got a full size loading door with twin locks. Then your habitation door, well, that's not linked to the central locking. Central locking does the alarm, but not the habitation door. The habitation door, you do need the key, but it's got a window, it's got storage pockets on the inside of the door, fly screen, and crucially, a nice low entrance with this double step inside the vehicle. Moving down, and of course, you've got your mains hookup, your fresh water filler. Now, the fresh water tank is inboard, so ideal for winter camping, 85 litres, which for a family motorhome perhaps seems a tiny bit on the small side. I'd have liked to have 100 litres, but it is in board, which I think is probably the more important thing. Waste tank is under slung, um, and that is 120 litres, and for easy draining, you've got a nice T-handle, no fiddly little tap that will take three and a half years to drain down your tank. At the front of the vehicle, you've got your gas locker, and that will take two 13 kilo cylinders, I think, because it looks very generous. We've got a flow gas, uh, 11 kilo in there at the minute. I'll just have to check on whether it will take two 13s. So that's the outside of this Remor Killig. Time to go and look at what you get inside. But before I do show you the inside, two things I should mention. The chassis is fully extended under the garage area, which is always good to see but there is no spare wheel. So if you want to carry a spare, which is probably a good idea, it'll have to go in that rear boot garage area. Right at the back of the vehicle is possibly the most important part of the whole layout because you've already seen there's a lower bunk. Well, of course there's an upper bunk too. Both beds are, well, around seven foot long. 2.12 meters is the lower mattress, 2.19 meters for the top mattress, and they're both 81 centimeters wide. Now, you actually get slightly more headroom in the bottom bunk, that's 85 centimeters headroom, whereas the top bunk's about 70 centimeters. They're both nice quality mattresses, both on slatted bases, so really comfortable even for older children. Of course, the bottom bunk is really accessible for little ones, and my nine-year-old thought this was brilliant. I love these bunk beds. My 15-year-old daughter liked to show me that you can get up to the top bed without a ladder, but well, I'm a little bit older than her and I need the ladder. 
the bottom bunk has an opening window, whereas the one thing missing up here is any form of ventilation. Yes, there's a roof vent just in just a little bit further away in the kitchen area, but I would have liked a window or a roof vent here for ventilation in really hot summer weather. Both have a reading light, both beds have a reading light. As I say, you get an opening window down below, no direct ventilation for the top bunk, but both beds have their own privacy curtain. It's not just the bunk beds that cater for the very tall either because headroom here is 2.07 metres or over 6 foot 9. And then other details, well over the doorway you've got this very simple control panel that's easy to use and then the controls for the Truma heating. Now it's a Combi 4 heater in this van but gas only. If you want to upgrade to the gas and electric system it's another £495. And I suppose that depends really on whether you're going to be camping off grid or on rally fields and uh, farm sites or whether you're going to be like here hooked up to the mains on most of your journeys. Over on the other side of the van you've got a couple of useful coat hooks nice and convenient by the door. Now if that's kids quarters at one end well mum and dad will probably sleep at this end of the van and the cab bed or the over cab bed tips up during the day so you've got easy walk through into the cab. Just pull it down, grab the ladder which clips into place and up you go. Now the bed up here again is a generous size especially in length it's 2.16 meters long by 1.42 meters wide. So a really good size adult bed there's a window at the foot of the bed, reading lights on this little shelf for maybe a glass of water or somewhere to put your specs. Now I thought I might bang my head on this shelf so I just pulled my pillows a little bit away from the wall because the bed's so long and then there's no issue at all. As I say you've got ventilation, the only issue may be that of course because of the shape of the roof Whoever's sleeping at this end, well, they might feel a little bit claustrophobic. So that's one to try before you buy. Like the bunks at the back, this bed is on a slatted base. And of course, you can leave all your bedding in place so you haven't got to find storage for it. You've got privacy curtains again. And a net to stop you rolling out, same as is fitted on the top bunk at the back. And I mentioned earlier on the advantages of an over cab. Well, obviously the disadvantages of reduced headroom, but this bed doesn't interfere with the lounge. So you can come to bed here, you've still got all your lounge area. And if you're using this van as a six berth, then maybe you put the kids up here and you'll sleep in the bed made from the lounge. Alternatively, if there's just four of you, use this bed, you come down in the morning and the tables are all ready laid for breakfast. How convenient's that? For nighttime privacy, you've got curtains and silver screens around the cab, although the curtains themselves are only quite thin. And then a nice surprise is that you've got the posh pleated blinds for all the habitation windows. If the parents are sleeping in the Luton, you can make the dinette, or the larger dinette, into a three-quarter size double or a wide single. It's just over a metre wide, 1.02 metres I think, and you've got plenty of length, especially if you remove the other backrest cushion. Alternatively, if you need a full-size double downstairs, there are these pull-out sections and drop-in extra infill cushions. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the full uh, full-size double bed because we haven't got all the infills in this particular van, but of course they do come with it, and that gives you a full-size double bed. The snag then is that you can't clip in the ladder for the overcab, so 
you'd have to put kids to bed upstairs and then remove the ladder and well you'd have to help them get down probably or or they could just jump now this gives you a good approximation of what the full-size double bed would look like and it would be 1.88 meters by 1.32 meters i think which would be six foot two by four foot four another possibility might be to drop this table down and make a small bed over on the near side and then just use the three-quarter bed on this side retaining the aisle in the middle and allowing of course the use of the ladder for the upper bed of course i think this motorhome probably works best for four two adults two kids and then there's no necess necessity for bed making at all but then if the kids want to bring friends or if you have got more children well there aren't that many six births in the market especially at this price and this size so yeah lots of potential for family motorhome holidays Of course, there's no point in having loads and loads of beds if you haven't got the seat belts to match. So the Killig 9 comes with, of course, two seat belts in the cab, two three-point belts for this forward-facing bench, and then two lap belts on the rear-facing bench. You've got these height-adjustable automotive-style head restraints on the forward-facing seat, and just a simple block headrest for the rear-facer on site one thing we all commented on was just how open and spacious this lounge area feels these big windows make a massive difference no you haven't got any giant roof lights as you get in so many modern motorhomes but these big windows and there's lots of artificial lighting too with these led strips top and bottom of the upper lockers and then additional ceiling lights as well no you haven't got any nice directional reading lights but then this isn't an £80,000 motorhome it's an entry-level vehicle you've got two dinettes so you've got this four-seater one on the off side plenty of room we got uh, three or three or four of us around this table to play Monopoly no trouble at all and then you've got a smaller dinette more of a, a kids dinette over on the near side so again if you're a family of four mum and dad could sit around the table here while the two kids are over on the near side in a more confined dinette but gives them their own space the near side dinette is clearly for kids it's a bit squishy for adults but it is really useful extra space and then on the wall behind you've got this well i'm not sure quite what it is but you could hang stuff from it maybe i don't know little designery touch what i do like is this use of this bright turquoise which matches the upholstery and gives the whole motorhome a bit more of a bright youthful vibe and the colors picked up on the top lockers as well up here you've also got the tv station so aerial and uh, 12 volt sockets up there if you want to mount a tv another thing to note is that there's really good storage under the seat that i'm sitting on the single near side forward facing seat that's where your boiler is the Truma combi under the forward facing double seat is where your fresh water tank is but that still leaves good storage space under both the rearward facing benches particularly useful is the space under this single seat which is surprisingly generous and be a great space for stuff that you don't need all the time maybe welly boots walking boots that sort of thing could all go in there and then the top lockers well they are a really good size too the top lockers all have positive locking catches and nice sturdy hinges they also got this deep lip so things that are valuable like my camera bag don't come tumbling out when you stop on your site that's one of my favorite features in the whole van because it's just so important however if you're not as tall as me you might struggle to see into these top lockers because they are quite high up and another thing going back to the seats is that they all they are all on solid bases rather than slatted bases so if you store the van over winter worth lifting the cushions off the seat bases and stacking them separately 
The other thing that's high up and certainly won't suit the shortest of chefs is this Thetford oven. Hmm, I hope I'm not wearing my fish pie when I get it out of there later on this evening. Underneath the oven is a very generous 142 litre automatic energy selection fridge and it's got a separate bottle drawer down below. So that's great. But we did wonder if maybe a smaller fridge with the oven a little lower or even the oven underneath the fridge might have been a better bet. Alongside the fridge and the oven you've got a very tall wardrobe. So if your other half is partial to taking some dresses with her on holiday, well there's plenty of length for them to hang in there. And then below that is another useful cupboard for some folded clothes. But the rest of the kitchen area is over on the off side. So the galley is quite small. Well, this is only a seven metre motorhome and you've got all this lounge area, you've got bunk beds, you've got decent washroom, which we'll come on to in a bit. You've got a big fridge, something had to give, but you've still got a nice three burner hob. You've still got a sink with a nice quality Argo tap. You've got really good storage down below big cutlery and utensil drawer, albeit hidden behind the cupboard door, but good, good cupboard space down below there. Plenty of room for storage. And again, another big top locker, although again, you do need to be tall and things sort of disappear in here. I've got a loaf of bread, but you find it by feel rather than seeing it because it's hidden behind the lip, but not decrying that lip because it is a really good feature to have. Now on this test vehicle the only main socket is the one at the end of the kitchen unit here but M and C the importers of Remor in Hull say that before the vehicle goes out they fit another three three pin main sockets so you'll have four in total which should be plenty for most needs. What I would have liked in this kitchen is just a bit more preparation space. Maybe something here, a little fold out worktop or something by the door, just to give you a bit more room to prepare meals. And somewhere when you're plugging in an appliance, a mains appliance, somewhere to put it when the cooker and sinker both, both have their lids raised because then you really are quite short of other space. Maybe you'll use the table, one of the tables for meal preparation, because otherwise you're going to be a little bit limited. And I should just add, perhaps before we move on to the washroom, look at the size of the sink outlet. That's proper domestic size. Another plus. And, well, all the furniture feels really nicely made, especially for a budget priced motorhome. And so finally, the washroom. And, well, it's quite an unusual layout, actually. You've got the bench cassette here where I'm sitting, rather than a swivel toilet. And actually, that works really well in this space. And most people reckon they're easier to clean, so that's another bonus. A cupboard up above. And then the basin in this moulded unit with a couple of little storage pockets. Well, there's plenty of worktop around for all your toothpaste and deodorant and all that sort of stuff. Little mirror on the wall, opening window for ventilation, as well as a little mushroom vent above. Towel hook and a towel rail. And then more storage here with a little shelf and a top cupboard. There's even a main socket, although some people might not approve of that in a washroom, but it's there for hair dryers and so on. Just be careful. And then when it comes to showering, there's simply a curtain that pulls across and covers the loo. So you've still got a really good shower area. The, the tap pulls out to become your shower head and you can either handheld it or clip it onto the ceiling. I did find that you could really do with a little bit of extra ceiling on the bottom of the toilet door to stop water coming out into the uh, into the aisle. But 
that is just a small point. Um, probably be quite an easy DIY fix, actually, just a little rail along the bottom of the door to deflect water back into the shower tray. And it's only a small, small concern. Anyway, in fact, the only thing really I didn't like about this washroom is the single tiny outlet in the shower tray, which is such a shame when the outlet in the sink in the kitchen is so generous. Even the one in the basin here is a better size. But hey, this is a good washroom, especially for a budget van. So that's the living area covered. Time to go for a drive. Foot on the clutch to start, and this is a manual gearbox motorhome. So this is the 130 PS engine, which is sort of entry level for Ford Transit motorhomes these days. Some of the uh, other models on the market have uh, 160 and 170 PS engines, so it's it's down on power against those, but those generally are more expensive motorhomes, and this is perfectly adequate. It's not a motorhome that you're going to be racing along in, so it's got enough power. In fact, I would say that this 130 engine actually feels more potent than the 140 engine in an equivalent Fiat Ducato. It's not uh, been down spec too much either. You've got all the bits that you need, um, air conditioning, cruise control, you've got this nice leather wheel which is nice sort of car-like size. Find out squirrel, you're going to get run over. Um, yeah, it's a nice car-like size steering wheel with the uh, switches on it for the, the radio and so on. And you've got things like automatic lights and wipers, which perhaps you wouldn't expect on such an entry-level motorhome. Performance, as I say, is, uh, is more than adequate. Um, fuel economy, well, we've been getting about 27. I think it's, it's dropped now to 26 and a half because we've been doing all the manoeuvring for photography and filming and so on. Um, I think that's probably a couple of miles per gallon down on an equivalent low profile because you are punching a, a great big unaerodynamic shape through the air and at uh, 50 60 miles an hour obviously that is going to make a bit of a difference but this van will do 70 comfortably um, ride quality is excellent as you'd expect with a ford now you do occasionally notice the extra height. Um, obviously this is a tall vehicle at over three meters high and in crosswinds um, yeah you can you can sometimes feel that. What you do notice though is that it hasn't got an excessive rear overhang so it actually handles better than some of the other Ford Transit coach builds I've driven of late. But and this is a big but. The really important thing is this is a budget motorhome, but listen to it, we're on quite a poor bit of road surface, it's quite ripply surface. Where are the rattles? Well, if you, if you really listen, you can hear the odd thing, but it's, by motorhome, coach-built motorhome standards, it's, it's completely rattle-free. And if Rimbaud can do that on a budget motorhome, why can you spend two or three times as much as this on a motorhome that rattles ten times as much? Well done, Rimbaud. This is uh, this is something to be applauded. A motorhome that isn't full of rattles. <laughs> And one thing I should add before we just go back to our pitch is that when my daughter was travelling in the front passenger seat, she did notice that the bulkhead behind the seat stops it reclining very far. So if you're the sort of passenger that likes to have a snooze while you're going along, well, you can probably forget it in this Killig. So the Rimor Killig 9. What a great value motorhome if you've got kids. Mine. 
loved the bunk beds. I love these bunk beds. And we enjoyed this big family space up front. Plenty of room and surprisingly comfortable too for what is a dinette rather than a more of a lounge. Yes, you've got to consider whether you want to sleep in the Luton, where headroom does reduce towards the front, or whether you make up beds down below. But this is a motorhome that works really well for four and can sleep and travel up to six. I've really enjoyed my time here too at the Sandringham Camping and Caravanning Club site, which must be one of the friendliest sites I've ever stayed on. What don't I like? Well, that oven. No, I didn't end up wearing the uh, fish pie on my head, but I wouldn't have wanted to get anything liquidy and sloppy out of there because it might have been all down the shirt. Other than that, well, this is a great family motorhome. I hope you've enjoyed this latest video. I remember all these videos are brought to you by MMM Magazine, Britain's best-selling motorhome magazine, established for well over 50 years. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe.